is it? Um, we may hear people saying differently today, and that's, that's their right, but we think that this plan shouldn't be and isn't a top-down approach to force compliance with the statewide land use plan. This isn't a land use plan. Um, it's, it's more of a policy plan that can really get New Jersey on the right track from a planning perspective. Um, it's not an additional layer of bureaucracy, as I mentioned up front. Some of the heavy bureaucratic functions of the state planning process of the past, uh, like the, the policy map and the uh, plan endorsement process, we're arguing we should back away from and replace it with, with, um, with things that are um, much more uh, bottoms up and much more flexible. It's certainly not, and the state plan has never been a substitute for local and regional comprehensive plans or local zoning, nor will it take away the authority of local governments to plan and zone their land under the authority of the municipal land use law. Uh, it's not going to be a silver bullet that's going to solve all of our problems. This is not uh, something that if you implement tomorrow, the world will be fixed and uh, New Jersey will be, you know, will meet its mission. But there's, there's, a, there's definitely a lot of things that need to break our way for us to turn the corner. We think that this framework allows us to have conversations about some of the niche issues in the state and give us a kind of a track to go on. Uh, we also don't think that as local governments are laying off cops and firemen and town managers that we should impose on costs to them to involve themselves in the state planning process. Um, it, plan endorsement uh, was a process that was intended to be a way for local governments to get certification from the state that they were consistent with the state plan. Uh, some planners uh, liked it, some planners didn't, but many, many local governments uh, did not like the process. We've had 17 go through. We have 565 municipalities in the state. So 17 municipalities of the 565 certainly isn't getting to any sort of um, scale where we can say that that program has been effective. The municipalities that have gone through the process before it has cost them between three hundred and five hundred thousand dollars on average to go through this process. And um, a planner that uh, didn't like the, the the process acknowledged it was some sort of cruel hoax where the state said if you did these things we would deliver incentives to you. Um, and so they spent the money. They, they did the right thing. They they did what they were asked to do. And in the end, the state pulled out and never really delivered its end. Uh, what we plan on doing, though, is into this new system is to translate forward the value of the work for those 17 municipalities to make sure that the work they did, um, who they would qualify as a priority area of the state um, for our new criteria system. So we don't think we can impose those costs on local governments. It, maybe it wasn't right to do before, but we know it's not right to do now. And moving forward, so we're arguing that those costs should be abated. Uh, the plan includes guiding principles for state decision making. Uh, some of these principles come from the lessons we learned through the red tape process, uh, with Lieutenant Governor taking the lead for that. Those are uh, predictability. Uh, that's not to say that every permit that gets submitted to the DEP is going to get approved. What we're saying is that the state of New Jersey will offer a clear path and quicker answers. And the path and answers offered by one department will not deviate significantly from another department. So you're not going to get you know, uh, one department doing this and one department doing this, where you don't really know how to comply with the state requirements because it's impossible to meet the requirements of one agency or the other. So basically the fact that we have is a no without anyone telling you. Uh, you have to get, and you basically have to spend a lot of time and money to get to that point where you just give up. So predictability could be a principle that can make the, the fiscal, fiscal and uh, um, the relationship with local government stronger. Spatial efficiency, this is our way of saying that we're going to place value on making investments in areas where infrastructure can be supported in ways that we keep our long-term service costs manageable. That we think upfront when we make investments on infrastructure, how is that going to impact the long-term costs to our current and future residents? Because we have to deliver services for some of these things forever. So spatial efficiency is our way of saying that we're going to be thoughtful about when we make investments how are we going to make sure that we're not passing the buck down to future generations? Leveraging assets. Um, the state of New Jersey uh, is committed by, under this principle to work with the private sector, higher education, and all levels of government to ensure that state assets are leveraged in strategic locations. This is our kind of our call to all the hundreds or thousands of acres of, you know, the morass of parking lots in our urban areas that are owned by state government. Uh, we've got assets that we have through transit that can be leveraged. There's, the state of New Jersey has assets um, that could work with local government to see that their local uh, economic development objectives are seen through. So we want to we want to consider those. Uh, the, the answers are going to be on a case by case basis, working with the towns. We're not saying we're going to we're going to recommend selling off every sort of any transit uh, parking lot that we have, but there may be some opportunities for us to work with local government. We think that's a principle we should take seriously. 
the next principle we talk about is sustainability. And uh, there's a, a lot of different ways to look at this. The way we're looking at this in the state for the state's plan is to plan for and respond to current and future challenges and opportunities through adaptive decision making that accounts for social, economic, <coughs> environmental protection issues. So we're going to, as we're making decisions today, we're going to consider the implications of this, those decisions for on tomorrow. And that we're not going to make decisions solely on the economic, social, or environmental benefit, but we have to have a wide range of uh, wide range of lenses to look through to make our good decisions that deliver short-term results without creating long-term issues for our state that will get passed down to future generations. And then we're also talking about institutionalizing change in a way that we don't have to, we can stop dealing with things permit by permit. If there's something that doesn't work or is stupid in state government, we want to change the regulation, we want to change the program. Or do we have an investment strategy in the state that's not working? Well, let's change that investment strategy to get it right. So we want to make those changes instead of having these audibles on, on, the, on a case-by-case -case basis. To get there, we have four goals. Uh, the first goal is targeted economic growth. In this uh, goal, we identify the industry sectors that we think are, are key for uh, uh, statewide and regional importance. We provide a, a simple map in here to identify where those sectors are right now today. We recognize there's more work to be done to identify where those core clusters are. That's work that will be done in the future. Um, we think we want to identify conditions uh, for sectors of statewide significance that are not ideal right now, uh, working with stakeholder groups from those industries, then translate that to action in local and in state government, uh, and then share what we've learned with local government to see that uh, if they want to attract and retain firms that the state also has interest in, we can start working together on that um, through uh, collaborative processes. Uh, in this, we want to also support land and water-based industries, so uh, our farmers, our fishermen, um, uh, are not forgotten in this conversation. They are identified as important industries, as well as, well as our tourism industry in the state, and our potential for growth in the green energy industry. Our second goal is in relation to effective planning um, for regional, at the regional level. So we're going to not offer in this plan the heavy-handed detail that you may have seen in the past uh, As a result, you may not see what this means for your backyard, and that's kind of the point. We're not interested in, in getting drilling down to your backyard and figure out because the state doesn't have a, uh, a rational place to be in that conversation other than from a, a higher higher perspective. We think that that detailed planning deserves to be had uh, and, and taking place at the local level uh, with some level of um, connection to the state that is less heavy handed than it is now. We want to invest, investigate and uh, basically transition in a new criteria based system that's from the bottoms up to phase out the state plan policy map uh, to transition into a priority growth investment area criteria. That proposal is actually available tonight. Uh, if you want to ask questions about that tonight, you can do that also. And we think we should strengthen the county planning role to facilitate regional collaboration in places where there is interest to do that. We think that the county, the county planning act could be amended in a way that allows municipalities that currently work with, with their county governments effectively seek efficiencies to continue that relationship and to strengthen it uh, if, if they seek to do that. The third goal is related to preservation and enhancement of our state's critical resources. Uh, I spoke a little bit before about our desires to continue uh, our success of our state's preservation programs, both farmland and open space. We know those programs are only successful because of the strong relationship and the strong advocacy and the strong fiscal partnership and administrative partnership we have with municipalities and county governments. So we want to continue that success. We also know that we need to coordinate functional plans of those programs with economic development. So we're not preserving land in areas that are targeted for economic growth. And we're not, uh, and the reciprocal also is true, where we're not um, targeting land for preservation that are, that are, or, or, um, uh, we, we basically want to, don't want to build roads in the places where we want to preserve a, a lot of farmland. And we also don't want to um, preserve farmland where we, where we see industry clusters having an opportunity to flourish and also to provide retail housing public services that are required to support that growth. So we need to be really careful to um, meld those functional plans at a high level to make sure that we're not at the state level stepping on each other's feet. And the fourth goal is tactical alignment of state government. Um, we need to enable effective resource allocation, coordination, and cooperation amongst the statewide players as a first step to really make sure that state government is working together. It's almost kind of a, it's almost kind of an embarrassment to say that we need to take this step, right? We should, we should 
should all assume that our state governments work together. And there's been a lot of great progress made in the last year and a half, two years under this administration to, to see that happen. So we want to institutionalize that progress that's been made um, in a way that's never been made done before uh, through a new uh, steering committee that was formed by the executive order. Um, so we can basically have state implementation through the state plan, really deliver what the local government's always wanted, uh, that state cooperation. So we're going to take that part uh, most seriously. We're going to require our agencies to develop and implement department strategic plans that would be uh, uh, basically be advised by the state plan. We also plan on discontinuing the planning endorsement process to ensure that uh, every dollar spent on planning and zoning locally uh, is, is spent on issues that are most related to local interests and not delivering on the state agenda. I went a little longer than I wanted to, but now is a good opportunity for me to stop talking. Thank you for your patience and attention, and I uh, look forward to speaking. <coughs>